Welcome everyone to the Master Vox, where today we have a special guest and a special uh, edition today with Nilla. Here, Nilla is going Hi, to describe what he's doing he, because we were talking about the platoon formation earlier. So we wanted to show you off, and he just beat me mercilessly to get this point across. So I'll let him do some talking. Yeah, so I am the REI co-op member. I love REI. They give you a gift card every year for being a co-op member for just paying them five dollars or ten dollars, something like that. It's pretty cool. So that's my name, and we're playing the 20th Panzer Division that we built together on a video a few weeks ago. Now, the idea here that I've always taken when I go into games is I try to build my forces on the three lanes in the map around being a platoon. So, and then try to think about it from there onto like a company level and just very rough understanding of like a, a force organization. I mean, I'm not a professional, I've never been in the military, I've had no desire to, but I've read a few books and I've watched a few videos and it works out pretty well. So if we draw our attention to the very oh, south where the ME-10 or the BF-109 is dropping bombs, yep. we can see my disposition of forces there pushing on the hill. So I looked at the hill and I thought to myself, all right, what's that hill gonna take for me? I'm going to need some Panzer Grenadiers to lay down a base of fire, and I'm going to need some Stoss Troop to either assault the hill or hold the hill. And my positioning is going to be, my Panzer Grenadiers are going to be on the right flank there. They're going to cover the opening in the Yellow Forest and then the hill top plateau. And then my Stoss Troop are going to hold the Green Forest um, just to the north of them. Because as we know, it's easier for Red to get into that Green Forest and the north of the Panzer Grenadiers. So they'll sit in there, they'll take the brunt of the fighting. And I'm playing against Ski Jaeger, so I know I'm probably going to lose. But what I'm going to do is whittle down um, the forces here, and then I'll have the Panzer Grenadiers move up and then take out what's left of them. And then by that time, I'll probably have reinforcements coming in, or I have took the position. That's the thought process behind it there. And we'll see that play out as the game moves along. But we'll move our, uh, our attention back up to the north in the town there, and we can see a little bit more of an advance uh, formation there of units so i have two infantry support tanks going to the town and the gorilla so the gorilla is going to be your you know more strategic level weapon you only get four in a support card in a phase which is what i brought them out in and then the panzer fours are there to be the fire support like the tank detachment to the um, infantry platoon that i have in the village there and what we're doing is we're also bringing out a half track because i know all right ski jaeger is going to have Sturm units, I have no Sturm units, but I can bring a good amount of firepower with the gorilla and the tanks and the mortar. So I'll take them out indirectly with the gorilla when I do the fire position and the mortar. And then the Panzer IVs will be there to be the base of fire while my units maneuver. So that's a platoon working with like a company level asset in that position right there. And like I said, if I'm using terminology wrong, I'm not a professional. It's just my understanding of it. You just have the proper fire support elements to create different sectors of fire and, you know, just completely, like what you're doing right here with these Panzer Grenadiers is there's S Troop and you're creating an L-shaped um, engagement area against that Ski Jaeger, so you're able to have more angles on them. I know Steel Division doesn't give a shit about real life, like, things like that, but that's basically what you're doing. You're allowing more units to engage along a front. Yeah, and that works to a certain extent in Seal Division. If you time it correctly, it's more like a, a pop-up ambush, like somebody's jumping out into the line of sight. Because if I, if my base of fire takes contact first, then that unit that it's engaging will aggro on it, and then from there, the L in the L, like the vertical part of the L and the L shape, will be able to just to shoot freely, and that's the killing part of the L shape ambush so you have to be really autistic with it like really in the nitty gritty and be like all right this pans around here engages first good these two engage now or this one engages now and that's the only way you can really do it because there's no individual unit um micro in terms of like the squad's formation yeah imagine if there was this game would be even wilder if you could be like all right do a wedge formation all right formation. with what they've done with warno i'm not going to ask them to do any more with steel division okay no, just leave it alone. It's fine. Just leave it yeah, as is. Yeah, just, just leave it as is. So any questions, Skuma, since there was a lot of talk in there? No, no, you're explaining it. Like, I just wanted to create this video for newer players to understand your mindset. I know I always give you shit about you being in the Steel Division retirement home, but you're mm -hmm. still really good at this, so I want you to be able to talk and actually tell the audience, like, how you think, like, being a former, like, number one player, you know? 
Yeah, and it's not going to be that thought process isn't going to always hold true as the game goes on because you're going to take losses. You're going to have to adapt to what's going on. Like if we look down south, we missed the engagement, but you can see one of my Panzer Grenadiers is still alive. So the plan partially worked, and now I'm supplementing my position on the hill there with a ton of Urzats troop in to fix the enemy, and then I'm bringing up tanks for fire support and I'm raining artillery down. So the same principle applies. I'm looking to fix the enemy in place, and I'm going to bring in other assets that can deal with it. Because more often than not, and you can see this happening in the real world right now, your fire support assets are going to be doing the killing while your infantry is going to be doing the fixing. Because you don't want to get in a gunfight. You never want to get in a gunfight. Because gunfights aren't fair, and some random bullet can just, you know, hit you in the head and you're done. Yeah. You could have been in the right position. You could have had better groupings and better aim. But you're in a gunfight and stuff happens. So that's why you want to have an artillery gun do most of the killing for you so you can keep your guys alive. So what I'm going to point out here is your use of the mortar allowed your Arizat's troop in and Grenadier DPs to push into what I had was CQC units. So because you were able to utilize those mortars to pin them down, you were able to then push in um, actual just line infantry to then take it and hold it. So that's one way to circumvent if you don't have CQC units and you do have high explosives, use them. Yeah, definitely. And really your goal in an infantry engagement or any engagement in the game for that matter is to suppress the other unit. And that's one good thing that Steel Division does and other Eugen games don't really show other than, I guess, War Games pretty good about it, is when a unit gets stressed, it gets suppressed, it's gonna start taking less casualties unless there's something lethal trained on the actual units themselves because most people are in concealment or cover yep. and it's really hard to shoot somebody you can't see and it's really hard to hit somebody who's behind a big mound of dirt. Yep. <clears throat> so you suppress an enemy force in the game. If you have your Urzats troop in, which are basically like child soldiers, they're not trained well. They're no, 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 that's Volksdeutsche. And that's, exactly, yeah. yeah. So the Urzats troop in are the, are the old and the sick, and they're not going to want to fight too hard against somebody with an automatic rifle while yeah. they have a car 98. But if they're stunned, the guy with the automatic rifle stunned because a mortar just hit his building, your car 98 is going to be pretty good because he's not going to be poking his head out for fear of getting hit by a mortar. Yeah. I want to point out that that Panzer IV F1 penetrated with its heats round on the T-3485. Yep. Yeah, so, it had a 36% chance to pen. Yeah. Also, Arizat's troop are just replacement troops that didn't receive proper training. You're talking about, like, Volksdeutsche mostly there. Yeah. With your description? Yeah, same idea applies. They're shitty. They're yeah. bad at their job. They yeah. shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. But we're seeing really good use of, like, fire support elements in this Panzer IV F1, the Panzer Grenadiers, the fuck ton of Arizat's troop in just to fix and allow HE units to um, then fire. And the use of the Martyr 1 along with the Panzer 4 fighting that KV-2. Yeah, and the KV-2, it's mean and it's hard to take out. So it's probably, I think it ends up winning that fight there. But it's just like keeping in mind matchups with tanks too and knowing what you're fighting against. And yeah. the risk here is the KV-2 is a more cost-effective unit in terms of a trade in that fight because it, you know, it kills one, kills two, then it's paid itself off, but you yep. only get two of them and their impact is outsized by how good it is in the game yeah they're really good and if yeah, we look and then now you're seeing like a lull in the battle because i don't have the ability to push with infantry and i don't have a ton of half tracks to exploit with but then you also have off map so if i do exploit and i find a place you're just going to drop off map on it very true and uh i dropped off map in the left side in the the town earlier and it was mostly just to try to stall you. I'm over here grasping at straws, trying to hold you back. But you have a really good positioning here. Uh, with Arizat's troop and being 15 points, they allow you to project onto the battlefield. So I didn't know this was literally just Arizat's. And you don't know if you're the opposing player. Like, I didn't know if you had more Grenadier's DP, if you had Stoss troop in there. But really, it's just a bunch of Arizat's with Martyrs and some, like, you know, SDKF. Yeah, and one thing too with the Arizat's point in mind is when you have a forested area you're fighting over or a town where you can conceal infantry but their presence is still going to be felt, if you keep those Arizat's trooping or those weaker, cheaper infantry hidden, you know, you can play a little ruse on your opponent where you can mirror their movements. So 
if they start pushing in an area, you push over more units over there, you keep your crappier units as a second line, and this isn't really like a multi-layer defense point, but more of a mirroring your opponent. So instead of letting there be a big bulge in the line that's just emptiness in an open field on Slutsk, put an Urzat troop in there. There might, they that might confuse your opponent into thinking, okay, well there's something there, I gotta be more cautious, or I was gonna do something here. I don't really wanna spend the points in figuring out what's there. So having that mirror in play is really important to taking away the information the front line gives the opponent. Yeah. And what it does is it forces your opponent to probe and not just push. Yep. And probing is still costly, too. Because mm -hmm. it gives me time if you probe or gives you time if I probe to respond to it and set up. Yeah. So having that response there is really important to not just have the front line cave in on you. Very true. And what we're seeing here mostly is like you have a lot of infantry, but you also have more support units for your infantry. So you're never actually just going into an infantry engagement. What I'm noticing is you're always going into an infantry engagement with some form of support element. Yep. And do you think that's one of the big things that makes you so successful in your infantry combat? Yeah, I try to like going back to the start of the video and what we're talking about the platoon setup and stuff like that is even as the game goes on and stuff starts to deteriorate your force composition isn't what what it was you've taken casualties i still have something there that achieves the same goal as my unit would be doing at a hundred percent so i have my airzats troop in with my SEKFZ armored car up north that's giving fire support i have the panzer four and the marta there to provide response to the tanks and fire support to them as well even though it's not as pretty as it used to be and most people they kind of look at it as a rock paper scissors like oh panzer four is good against infantry i need a t-34 to kill that and then i would need to call it a martyr to kill the t-34 but the way i look at it is all right i don't just need to respond to the units i need to respond to how i'm taking the position what do i what do i require to take this position because if you're calling in a T-34 to go fight in the town, a T-34-85, then my martyr is going to have a better chance against it because it's going to be so close that the armor in the T-34-85, if it was at max range against the martyr, isn't a factor anymore. You're at 500, 1,000 meters, and the pack's going to do just good against that. Yeah. Oh, damn, that Nebelwerfer actually killed the half-track mortar with one shot. Yep. Wow, I've never been so lucky. Yeah, I think it was out of ammo, too. <laughs> it already blew its load. God damn it. Yep. You got it, though. Yeah. Um, but what we saw there was me trying to, like, support the infantry, because I know the T-34s and the T-34-85s have, like, multiple machine guns, and I wanted to be able to fight back against armor, because I didn't have anything here to fight back against armor. Yep. And now we see the off-map that we put in the beginner deck for 20th Panzer popping in right now to be able to dislodge me because you weren't going to dislodge me. I had recon forces. I had like really close quarter infantry. I was really kind of hoping that I could hold there, but that off map's just going to fuck everything up because it's going to pin everything. It kills your leaders. If there's a leader in that off map circle, it is dead. And that's yeah. because leader units are so anemic um, or there's so few of them that any direct hit or hit around them pretty much just always wipes the unit. So that's one thing. Not only are you pinning um, an area so you can run into um, surrender them, but you're normally going to kill leadership within that circle. So fun Yeah, facts. and then especially if you have radios and you're relying on radios and or veterancy, it's just so, so crippling. Very, very much so. And then this gets three um, rounds of shooting, doesn't it? The 200? Or 220? I, oh, no, it's it two. It only gets one. Yeah, or two, sorry. Yeah, two. And then, yeah, it's got one left now. Was that a long duration you put there? Mm, that one that I'm putting down is. Oh, that's so dirty. So you're, what he's doing there is he's cutting off my reinforcements because he sees me, like, staging with that Martyr 3 right there and trying to build my forces. So by putting that there, it cuts off the main reinforcement road. Yeah, and then if I wanted to, if I was in a better position to push, which my thought was... I was going to go along either that northern or southern road in the town, depending on how good that off map was. You can see my pioneers and their half tracks moving down south. But if I would I looking at it now, I should have pushed up north through those buildings because the off map's going to block off down south. I could get fire support in the field up north and then do what I did at the start. Exactly. 
But you're seeing all my little ski Jaeger squads that are like half dead. They got retreated and I'm too busy mm -hmm. microing everything around the map is like I'm putting out little fires. Because I was able to push back your push in the center hill only to have the JU-87 pin every one of the infantry down. <laughs> yep. Yeah, always use your cluster bombers against infantry. They're honestly better against infantry than they are tanks. Because people always have AA near their tanks. If you're on a part of the map that's all wooded and there's not a lot of tanks being used down there, just stun stuff and take positioning. So yeah, that's one thing to think about is like, you can get so much use out of those cluster bombers that it's crazy. Yeah, because if you have a breakthrough like down south where I'm in a really strong position there, not only tanks to exploit it, but I take out that Sturmski Jaeger there with the cluster bomber by making it retreat. I surrender that. That tells me everything I need to know. There's nothing left in the town. It changes the front line and then it tells me, all right, I need to get reinforcements up here because I'm about to take this spot. Yeah, and uh, I just figured this was a good amount of watching me get my ass whooped. So 16 minutes to prove the points and to show different tactics that Nella here thought was important to, especially at the beginning. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the games you can pretty much tell who's going to win in the first 10 minutes just based off of that original 750 on 750 point engagement. Yeah, typically speaking, it's going to always come down to that. There, there are cases where, you know, people blow it. But if you blow it in the start, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, like, if you get that lead and you blow it and then they're able to crawl back, you fucked up somewhere in there and the trade started getting really, really bad. But you yep. can pretty much tell because you have to think of this, right? When you're looking at A phase, you're looking at 750 points at the very beginning, plus whatever income you have in A phase for whatever income you've chosen, right? So you have to think that A phase may possibly have the most income. That's why Vanguard, if you're able to start successfully creating tactics to uh, breach through, is so devastating because you can completely demolish your opponent. Even though you both have that same 750 at the beginning, you're able to then degrade and trade better and take those positions and utilize all of your points in that A phase. Yep. Yeah, and it's just a game of economics at that point. You trade positively, you have the income, advantage there then you're going to be rolling and don't be afraid to trade space for time so you, you always yeah. have that ability to keep your units alive on the field so they can keep projecting power and so you can keep delaying the forces if you're at that negative point in that a phase or b phase depending on what um, you're playing as yeah that's why maverick is so powerful yes and even though you love v for victory for some reason i don't get it you're a masochist Yep. <laughs> it gives you that Vanguard uh, start, and then it gives you the insurance of balance, and then so long as you're good in A phase, you're going to be fine in B phase. Very fair. So with that, I figured this was a good little um, introductory, well, not really introductory, but like a explaining of tactics for how to properly utilize infantry. Uh, would you like to go over any like highlights, any points you think that we need to hit nail in at the very end? Just set up some ideas in the deck that you're using, you're getting good with, and be like, all right, what's the composition of units that I'm just going to kind of default to? It's not going to be right for every single situation, but typically if you have two Panzergrenadiers, a Pioneer, a Leader, you're going to be in a good spot. And then you can start sprinkling in tanks and stuff like that or other kinds of units. But if you have just like a Strelke, two Strelke and a Sapiri, something just close quarters, fire um, superiority, you're going to be doing pretty well. Yeah, I agree. And that way it allows you to respond to different situations regardless where you're at. And so you're never completely caught off balance, I'd say. Exactly. Okay. And with that, I'd like to thank you, everyone who stayed around to watch the whole thing. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Even if you put something like, I like toast, I don't give a shit. It helps the algorithm. And we must praise the algorithm gods here on YouTube. So just remember that. And exactly. with that, uh, Nilla, anything you'd like to say at the very end? Nope. Just have a good one. All right, see you guys on our next cast. Bye.